You have him. We bet. Let's go with y'all, man. J Ben's the light. So who did ya? And today is lesson three of Cyclamen C, The Secret of Psychic Power Control by Frank Rodolph Young. You have him. So we're gonna dive right back in. You know what I mean? Today I feel like it's gonna be a shorter lesson. It's only about six pages, lesson three, so let's get into it, man. Cyclamancy by Frank Rudolph Young, The Secret of Psychic Power Control. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's jump right into it, man. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. So lesson three, how to put your muscle coordination center under psychic power control. How you can gain limitlessly from the incredible potentials of your muscle coordination center. All right. So how to put your muscle coordination center on the psychic power control. So muscle coordination. So I'm guessing before we get into it, that this is talking about how to get your balance right. You know what I'm saying? How to, you know, increase your strength tremendously just through the power of your mind, you know, mentalism and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, let's get into it, man. How you can gain limitlessly from the incredible potentials of your muscle coordination center. Your muscle coordination center, the fourth part of your primitive autoconscious, has three important primitive portions, your corpus, striatum, striatum, your red nucleus, and your cerebellum. For simplicity, though, they will be referred to altogether as your muscle coordination center. All right. Spontaneous electric potentials occur in your muscle coordination center but they are weak because your conscious mind restrains them to keep your muscle activity conventional. You know what that remind me of? That remind me of freaking, that remind me of Mike Guy and, and, uh, and Rock Lee and Naruto. Like when Mike Guy fought, oh, I'm going to show y'all. That's what I'm talking about right here. This is Madara. And when Mike Guy fought Madara, you feel me? And he and he activated the eighth gate, the eighth gate of death. Y'all know what I'm talking about? For all my people who know Naruto, that just flashed into my mind. Like, literally, if y'all never watched, for my people who haven't watched Naruto, when Mike Guy, act, my, right, it's like this. There's the eight gates. So these gates are like essentially energy, like energy points or powers or whatever that with well, each gate you activate, it activates a certain portion of your, it's like it unlocks a certain aspect of your muscles. Like when, like in your normal state, when the gates, when the different gates aren't open, like your muscles only exert a certain amount of force or they only allow you to exert a certain amount of force, right? But then when you go, when you activate the eight gates in Naruto, then each gate is like activating or unlock or like taking the governor off of your muscles to make it so that you're able your muscles are able to exert a certain level of force that they don't usually exert. You feel what I'm saying? All the way it's the first gate all the way up to the eighth gate, with the eighth gate being the, the gate of death. Meaning when you activate the gate of death, like Mike Guy did versus Madara, you essentially just completely take off the governor that your muscles have. So that made it so that my man was able to literally like punch the air and be sending shock waves through the air just by punching it. Like right here, hold up. When you have something precious to you, might even die to protect, re release eight gates formation. Nah, like this is fire. I, I just got to watch it on YouTube, man. Matter of fact, low key, let's watch that right now. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch that right now, son. We're going to watch that right now, real quick. Mike Ga versus Madara. That's exactly what he's talking about. Oh, my God. These fucking ads. All right. So while that's playing, we're just going to keep reading. Matter of fact, we're just going to wait. We're going to wait for these ads to finish.
Uh, uh, that's what's going to be. All right, so this is my man Mike guy right here. Uh, yeah, backstory, backstory. All that. Hold up. Let's skip all this extra shit. Oh, yeah. All right, so my guy activated the eight gates. And then you see he punching, he punching the air. Like he literally sending shockwaves just by punching the air because he fully activated his muscles by activating the eight gates. You feel me? Hit my nigga with the Hadouken. Hit my nigga with the Hadouken. Now, mind you, you just got to know Naruto, man. Mind you, Madara is like, right now, he's one of the strongest characters to ever live, like, in Naruto. And this guy, Mike God, is fighting him like it's nothing. But it's because he activated the eight gates or whatever. His full, or the full, full control of his muscles. Let's get back into it, man. Where was we at? Spontane uh, spontaneous electric potentials occur in your muscle coordination center, but they are weak because your conscious mind restrains them to keep your muscle activity conventional. In the laboratory, however, the nerve connection between the center and the conscious mind has been cut experimentally, freeing it from the restraint. Bursts of high voltage were at once sent out from the center. Your muscle coordination center, in other words, has concealed in it a very high degree of the dynamite of protoplasmic irritability. When you free it from the civilizing control of your conscious mind, it will explode its intensive dynamite and accomplish the unbelievable for you. Literally, some Naruto might guy eight gates type shit. You can free it from that restraint with psychic power. Put your muscle coordination center under psychic power control and you can tear it loose from the restraint of your overreasoning. Over analyzing conscious mind and instantly gain explosive muscular power, endurance, physical grace, and alert. That's exactly what the hysteric does, but in a negative fashion. You can do likewise, but in a positive fashion. So when he says that's what his, the hysteric does in a negative fashion, he's saying that like the person who goes crazy, like the person who goes crazy and essentially loses their mind, they fully activate. Like, you know, like the crackhead. Like, think about like a crackhead type shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Hold up. Think about like a crackhead with like a... Hold up. Shit. <laughs> All right. So think about like this right here. Think about... Think about like a crackhead. My man is riding a bike and just carrying a big-ass, heavy-ass fridge on his back. You feel me? Like some crackhead shit carrying a big ass fridge on his back. Now, you may be asking yourself, how is it that a crackhead is able to just like have this crazy strength? It's cause like, I don't know. I, I never smoked no crack in my life. So I don't really know. I, I know. I don't know about that experience. But the thing about the crack, it seems is that it just unlocked these superhuman abilities in people. You feel me? Like, like I seen crack kids just do the craziest shit, like, like just befriending all type of animals and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? You feel what I'm saying? So, like, essentially, that's what it is. It's like the crazy person or the hysteric would be like the crack kid who, through intaking the crack, like on some negative shit, they able to unlock their muscles, like the full potential of their muscles. You know what I'm saying? But what Frank Rudolph Young is saying here is if you are able to get the knowledge, do the practices, do the work to unlock your psychic abilities and get your psychic control over yourself, then you'll be able to have control over your muscles and do what the crackhead is doing, except, you know, You'll be able to do it through your psychic power instead of, you know, through the use of some crack or some shit like that, right? Let's continue. 
how your muscle coordination center functions. Every muscle in your body is under the control of your muscle coordination center. In lesson one, you learn how your muscle coordination functions when your biceps lifts heavier and heavier weights by bringing more and more stabilizing muscles into action to increase its lifting power. Learn how your muscle coordination center brings your nervous system into play in order to affect that increase of power and why you can therefore perform the miraculous with it by bringing it under psychic power control. When you try to lift the weight with your biceps, then the following is what occurs in your nervous system. One, a message is dispatched immediately by your biceps along a nerve toward your conscious mind, demanding the necessary strength it needs to lift the weight. You cannot lift the weight if you were unconscious or asleep, no matter how light it was. Your conscious or subconscious mind has to rule the muscle or the muscle will not lift the weight. Two, but the nerve does not lead to your conscious mind. It is only a nerve segment, after all, leading to your spinal cord and ends there. Three, in your spinal cord, as a consequence, the message from your biceps has to leap across the nerve gap or synapse and transfer itself to another nerve segment that leads to your brain. Four, this second nerve segment conveys the biceps message up your spinal cord to your muscle coordination center and ends there. Five, your muscle coordination center receives the biceps message and sends it on by still another nerve segment to your sensations recording center. Six, your sensations recording center finally relays it onto your conscious mind. Your conscious mind restrains and refines the message and selects for your biceps just the right amount of strength it requires to lift that weight. Seven, your conscious mind then delivers a command to your biceps through the command carrying nerves to contract enough to lift the weight. Eight, but your biceps need a balancer to maintain your posture while it lifts the weight. Your triceps being its antagonist muscle, your muscle coordination center automatically delivers it a command to contract too, to put a break on your biceps. Nine, your triceps, on the other hand, should not contract so firmly that it prevents your biceps from lifting the weight with a bare minimum waste of energy. Your muscle coordination center hence delivers still another command to your triceps not to contract too firmly. 10. Your triceps, as a result, contracts too, although much less than your biceps, but it also relaxes enough to let your biceps operate without a necessary waste of energy. And so your bicep lifts the weight aided by the coordination of your triceps thanks to your muscle coordination center. 11. When you lift a still heavier weight and more and more muscles go into action as stabilizing muscles, these also come under the control of your muscle coordination center because they are helping your biceps lift it just as your triceps does. You feel me? That's how your biceps work. Other ways in which your muscle coordination center helps you in your everyday life. The same extension of control over your muscles occurs when you master or perform skilled movements such as those requiring body, ba body balancing or the sense of equilibrium or participate in any sport or pleasure in which your muscles are used expertly. For instance, swimming, skiing, skating, bowling, golfing, dancing, singing, playing a musical instrument, painting, strutting about elegantly in clothes, sexual activity, dentistry, surgery, waiting on tables, manual or skilled labor, dramatic acting, repairing your house, driving a car, riding a horse, bicycle, motorcycle, ad infinitum. Every such activity requires you to use many muscles of your body in synchronous action with each other in order to enable the principal muscle being used to increase its efficiency many times. This is also the case, for example, when an athlete strives to break a record, the dancer or musician to better his performance or the motorist to squeeze through congested traffic. The participant then has to add considerable psychic power control to his skill, for he cannot prepare beforehand for every eventuality he might encounter. 
I see. The multiply force given your muscles by your psychic power command drive. It is unbelievable how much added strength or ability your psychic power command drive can give your muscles. It is a secret of how miraculous feats of strength are performed. When a muscle gets stronger, its fibers grow bigger, but the strength the muscle can eventually attain is out of proportion to its added size. Examine the average bodybuilder who lifts barbells. He might commence to train with an upper arm measuring 14 inches in a few years, develop it to a peak of 16 or 17 inches at most. His arm girth has increased less than 25%, yet he might lift that first no more than 80 pounds in the overhead press, but in a few years increased to a maximum of 180 to 200. His strength has grown up to 150% or six times as much as the growth of his arm. Besides, under the microscope, his muscle fibers look just the same, except that they may be up to one-fourth thicker. What could have caused his extraordinary increase in muscle power, despite his comparatively minor muscle, minor growth in muscle size? The answer cannot be skill. It requires little skill merely to push a barbell overhead. Neither can it be his conscious mind, for it is not logical to become so much stronger with so little additional muscle growth. The answer is the lifter's psychic power command drive. With sheer psychic power, illogical as it was, he convinced himself that he could lift more and more weight. His psychic power center sent his command rocket to his muscle coordination center and ordered it to ignore the restraining influence of his conscious mind on it. Bursts of high voltage, the concealed dynamite of its protoplasmic irritability, were at once sent out from it and added tremendously to the might of his stabilizing muscles that enabled his principal muscles to increase their efficiency six times more than their tissue growth accounted for. If the bodybuilder were of championship caliber, indeed, he might press up to 275 pounds or more, even with arms no larger than those. His strength, in other words, would augment 245%, while his muscles still only grew 25%. It would increase about 10 times in proportion to his increase in muscle size. I want to speak on this real quick. Now, I can attest to this because me and my life, I'm a person, I work out a lot and I hit the gym a lot. You feel what I'm saying? Calisthenics, all of that, you know, yoga, whatever. Now, me, when you look at me, I'm not really that. Hold on. I, like, when you look at me, son, look at me, like, I'm not that big of a guy. You feel me? I'm not that big of a guy, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm not super aki. But even though I'm not that big of a guy, even though I'm not that big of a guy, I lift a lot. I'm actually very strong, you feel what I'm saying? I'm actually, if you if you want to know, I'm 5'5". Five, five, a hundred and like forty pounds, but I bench uh two twenty five. I squat um two seventy five. Uh, overhead press. I'm not exactly sure to be honest. I don't really overhead press too much, but long story short, I'm just I'm I'm actually very strong despite what my size is. Like I'm not super muscular or whatever. But yet I'm very strong. But I've that's because I've been working out for so many years. And the same time as working out, I like I fast and like I don't really I really eat like max like one meal a day. You feel me? So. And this is very true also because your mentality is a big thing. Like for my people who hit the gym and y'all be in a gym with your life type shit. Right. Your mentality when you on the bench and you pushing out that last rep and it feel like you lift in the house, whether you tell yourself, push, push, whatever, or if you tell yourself like, oh, fuck, I'm cooked, that has a big effect on you putting that weight up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know you know a person is really determined to push up that weight when, like, say you on the bench and all my guys or all my whoever it might be, most, mostly my, my guys, y'all know what I'm talking about. You on the bench and you pushing, you pushing that weight so you got a spotter. 
you pushing that up and it feel like you lifting the house and then like you pushing it up real slow but you know like nah i'm getting this shit up and then like your spotter he go to try and like t- help you out or like he about to like touch the bar and you're like nah don't touch it don't touch it you feel what i'm saying like y'all know that y'all know what i'm talking about like and that moment right there that moment right there that's how you know like your mentality is really working like that's your real mentality aka your psychic power your ability whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying another example is cross training it is commonly known by orthopedists that if one leg is immobilized by a cast exercising the other leg will increase the strength of the immobilized one it proves that the mind or the nerve to the leg itself develops muscle power reflexly also this just came to my mind son this entire world that we live in, this shit is holographic, bro. This is a holographic universe that we live in. Like, none of this shit really exists. Like, when you feel pain, all that is is just your nerves sending the signal to your brain, like, yo, there's some pain going on. And your brain creates the sensation of pain. You feel me? Your brain creates the sensation of pleasure. Your brain creates pain, pleasure, sadness, happiness. Your brain is what creates all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't have a brain, then you wouldn't be able to perceive nothing that's within this realm of reality. You know what I'm saying? Literally, all of this is created by your mind. So, with that being said, then you understand that, like, literally, if you have control over your mind, and that's the first law of Tahuti as, as well, mentalism. When you gain control over your mind, you gain control over your psychic powers then quite literally you you'll be able to to be bodybuilder strong power lifter strong basically without even hitting the gym or nothing you know what i'm saying now i know it sounds very re- unrealistic and it sounds just very impractical but we got to understand that the spiritual is what creates all of this that we see around us. Like this entire reality that we have around us is created by the un- this the seen comes from the unseen. This entire reality that we find ourselves in is a product or a manifestation of the spiritual world of the unseen. You feel what I'm saying? So, how to develop psychic power control over your muscle coordination center? You have three times as many nerves carrying messages from your muscles to your spinal cord or brain as carrying commands to your muscles. Also, when it comes to understanding how this world is a holographic universe, read this book right here. Read this text right here, Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. Read this text right here, son. This will tell you everything you need to know. This right here will tell you everything you need to know. Or not if even if you want this is this is a, a scientific text. You feel what I'm saying? Quantum physics and all of that. You know? This is a scientific text will get which will give you practical, scientific, experimental, like all of that information as to how this entire world we live in is a holographic universe, a holographic world. There's some shit that literally is created by your mind. That's why mentalism is the first law of Tahuti. You know what I'm saying? That's why mentalism is the first law to Hootie. Hold on. I'm going to show y'all something about mentalism real quick. What the fuck is this? Niggas making shit extra complicated. Ah, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm going to just read it from the book. Show y'all what mentalism is real quick. 
I'm going to read to you uh, what mentalism is from the laws of Tahuti, a.k.a. the Kabbali. I'm, you know, I'm saying. Give me a second. All right, here we go. All right. Here we go. The law of mentalism, the principle of mentalism, the very first law of Tahuti. You know what I'm saying? First law of Tahuti, mentalism. The principle of mentalism. The all is mine, the universe is mental, the Kabbalion. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the terms of the mental universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit, which in itself is unknowable and undefinable, but which may be considered and thought of as a universal infinite living mind. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe as a whole and in its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all, in which mind we live and move and have our being. This principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention, and which, without such explanation, are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. You feel me? An understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and to apply the same to his well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is enabled to apply intel intelligently the great mental laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner. With the master key in his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. This principle explains the true nature of energy, power, and matter, and why and how all of these are subordinate to the mastery of mind. One of the old hermetic masters wrote long ages ago, he who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path to mastery. And these words are as true today as at the time they were first written. Without this master key, mastery is impossible. And a student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. This is from Yo Kabbalion. You feel me? Mentalism, nigga. Let's continue, though. Let's continue, though. So also, like, with reading that, you understand, like you said, these things defy the physical. You got to understand, man, that the truly spiritual person, the, the psychic master, the master over his mind, the master over this physical dimension is the spiritual master, the psychic master. You feel what I'm saying? The spiritual master is the one who is able to, to, hold on, I'm going to show you. I think it's going to learn today. This is an example of what a spiritual master is able to do. This is some crazy to some to most of y'all. This is some crazy shit. So, matter of fact, this image is an image of a Buddhist monk bathing or meditating in a in a pot of boiling hot oil. You feel me? He's not the only one. He's not the only one to do this. You feel what I'm saying? He's not the only one to do this, you know? Many of the spiritual masters are able to do things like this. 
to the average person, if they were to do this, go into a hot bo- boiling pot of oil, your ass gonna come out with with your ass gonna be damn near just bones because your muscle, your skin, everything getting burnt off. But the spiritual master who has psychic control over his body, psychic control over his mind, has control over his mind, body, his soul, is able to do these things which just defy all of the laws of physics, the laws of nature, all of that. The psychic spiritual master is able to defy nature for the simple fact that the spiritual is what creates nature. Nature is simply just a product of the spiritual. Nature is simply just a product of the all, the all mind that we all are. You know what I'm saying? We are all God in this world. You feel what I'm saying? We are all the creator, Allah, God, Yahweh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We are that. You know what I'm saying? Replace, like, son, if you got a Bible with you, replace the name Jesus with your name. That's how you're supposed to read the book. Replace the name Jesus with your name and you crack the code to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like the spiritual master understands that, bro, we are the ones that are creating this shit. We create this world. Everything that you see about around you, not only the man-made stuff like the skyscrapers and the buildings and the houses, but even the trees, the sun, the moon, the atmosphere itself the oxygen every all the different elements these these are things that ha- that were created at one point they were created somehow some way but who or what created it you did you feel what i'm saying you are the one that created all of this shit like all of us like bro teamwork make the dream work like my brother dolo the pilot man be saying son teamwork make the dream work we are the ones that are literally we are the ones that's creating this shit bro you know what I'm saying? We come together as a universal, all together oneness mind, which separates itself into the illusion of different parts, individuality. You know what I'm saying? In order to create everything that we see about us. You know what I mean? So, something to think. That's something to think about, man. Let's continue though. How to develop psychic power control over your muscle coordination center. You have three times as many nerves carrying messages from your muscles to your spinal cord or brain as carrying commands to your muscles. Much more, more than one message carrying nerve then comes face, comes to face each command nerve at the nerve gaps in your spinal cord or brain. For a muscle of yours to receive its full command, it needs to receive messages from more than one message carrying nerve at the same time. Otherwise, it is only partially stimulated and only some of its fibers contract. With a strong enough psychic power command, however, you can order a considerable number of message carrying nerves to send messages to the command nerve of any muscle. Your body itself does so with muscle coordination, but you can do so yourself to a much greater degree with psychic power commands so that the muscle contracts fully at your will. That is how the weightlifter, the shot putter, the sprinter, the short distance swimmer and other athletes who rely on power as well as speed break records. It also explains why small muscled men like the yogis can achieve miracles of physical power even without special training. Their psychic power command drive is 109 times more powerful than the average man's without even considering its multiplication at their easily overcome nerve gaps. The following exercises will develop your psychic power control over your muscle coordination center either for power or agility if you are a man or for grace and overwhelming beauty of movement if you are a woman. Either of these qualities which you will acquire surprisingly fast will bring you all conquering confidence in yourself. You feel me? Exercises for developing physical psychic power control over your muscle coordination center if you are a man. Exercise one, how to increase markedly at will your power in any sport. Suppose you are weightlifting, running, hammer throwing, swimming, jumping, batting, swinging the golf club, or engaging in any sport which requires both power and skill. You have thrown your full strength behind your moves, but you need more power to do better or to win. Your logical conscious mind, backed by the pain in your muscles when you tried your best, tells you that you have reached your peak for the day. 
refuse to believe it, desert it into your psychic power center and prepare to surpass yourself. I got to read that one more time, son, because that's that's key and that's the most powerful right here. Right here where I'm highlighting. Your logical conscious mind, backed by the pain in your muscles when you tried your best, tells you that you have reached your peak for the day. Refuse to believe it. Refuse to believe it. Your mind, that ego mind that you have, your ego mind, that player hater, that's the quote, that's what Brother Penix call it, that player hater mind that you have will tell you all these different things about yourself. It will tell you, son, man, you try, you try to start a new business. You got this idea for this business, man. But what if that shit don't work? What if this? What if that, man? All the, it, your, that player hater going to tell you all the different reasons as to why this shit can't work. You feel me? When you lifting that weight, when you on your last rep on the bench press, your last rep on that squat, and it feel like you lifting the house, that player hater mind going to tell you, son, you can't do it. You can't do it. Like, just put that shit down. Quit. Quit, motherfucker. That's what that player hater going to tell you. Son, refuse to believe it. Refuse to believe it. Because you must understand that your spirit, you are the Lord and the master. Your spirit. Is that which says, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. That ego says, no, you're not. You're going to do this inside of, you're going to do what you want inside of these limitations. You need to override that ego and understand you are the spirit. You are the master. You are the Lord. This body is your servant. This entire ride that you have in this incarnation, with this incarnation, this ride that you are in, within this vehicle that is your physical body. This physical body is your servant. This, it's a vehicle that is meant to serve you. When you get in a car, when you get in a car, do you Son, when you get in a car, when you get in a car, do you, does the car take you where it want you to go? Or do you drive the car yourself? You feel what I'm saying? You are the one that is driving the car. That is this body, this vehicle that you find yourself in. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to start. Acting like it. Start acting like it and take control over yourself. Because you must understand that you are the master. You are the God. The Hindus would say, you are the Atman. You are the Brahman. That's what you are. But you have this ego, this monkey mind that says, no, the fuck you not. That ego mind, when you listen to the ego mind, has been programmed by the religion. Then the religion going to say, the religion going to put into that ego mind, yo, you got to worship God outside of yourself. You got to do all this different type of shit. Son, understand, you are the God. Let's continue, though. Refuse to believe it. Desert it into your psychic power center and prepare to surpass yourself. Relax from head to foot with muscle tone withdrawal and take deep breaths to saturate yourself with electrons. Potential power and muscle tone withdrawal go hand in hand. Get into position to repeat the effort now, but remain relaxed. Send a psychic power command rocket from your psychic power center to your conscious mind, ordering it to command your muscles to achieve the new mark this time. Before your logical conscious mind can question the practicality of that order, Reinforce it with still another psychic power command rocket intensifying the order. Suddenly tense your muscles and go into action. 
If you have added weight to the barbell, your conscious mind will immediately react with shock and desperation or forebodings of impending failure. Obliterate those forebodings instantly with a third psychic power command rocket, ordering your conscious mind to keep right on pushing with your hands, no matter what. If you are running or swimming or practicing in any sport in which it is more difficult to gauge the drive of the extra force needed, just visualize your muscles as being that much stronger to achieve their goal and use them as if they were that much stronger. Don't desperately try to be stronger or savagely try to act stronger. Quietly accept yourself rather as being that much stronger and let your muscles instinctively match your new conception of their vigor. Another important, po another important point that I got to read again. Don't desperately try to be stronger or savagely try to act stronger. Quietly accept yourself rather as being quietly accept yourself rather as being that much stronger and let your muscles instinctively match your new conception of their vigor. Still apply all your power, of course, but do so as if you have been keeping it in reserve until now. You will be surprised at how swiftly your, your strength will grow. If you are engaging in this exercise during training, do it once a week. Don't do it to the point of strain or exhaustion, except in competition. However, your best results will still be achieved if done no more than once a week because it takes the muscles several days to recover completely from the abnormal force used. You know what I'm saying? Exercises for developing psychic power control over your muscle coordination center if you're a woman. Exercise one, how to acquire swiftly the grace of a fashion model. If you are a woman, set up an angle on your dresser and set up at an angle on your dresser an opened magazine or newspaper displaying a picture of a gracefully posed fashion model. Stand before your mirror now and pretend that you are she. Imitate her position from head to foot. Copy the exact angles of her feet on the ground, the serpent-like twist of her body, even if slight, the different heights of her shoulders, the balanced placements of her arms, the expressions of her hands and fingers, the sweep of her neck, the direction of her head, the thought behind the gaze of her eyes, and the personality of her smile, if she has one. Exercise 2. When satisfied that you have copied her exactly, copy in other pose, either of that same model or of another. Continue until you, have, until you learn four different poses. Practice them until you feel natural when doing them. Exercise 3. Assume the first pose again, then blend into the second, third, and fourth. Between the different poses, in other words, don't suddenly drop your arms. Straighten your body and abruptly assume the next one. Glide instead from one to the other so that the onlooker feels as if he's being wafted with you into each. Even melt your face and eyes from one into the other. Blending from one pose into the other keeps you aware of every part of yourself. Even when you assume each one anew, you have to remember the exact position in which to place every part of your body so that each balances the other, both in equilibrium and in artistic perspective. Throw oomph into each pose as well into the blending between them and create mood. Some of the best fashion models possess only passable figures, but they create compelling moods when they pose. They achieve them with psychic power control over the muscles of their bodies, through their muscle coordination centers, and also by projecting psychic power outside their bodies, which you too will do with your brain horns. Stop every abrupt gesture and glide into each different pose like an accomplished ballerina during her dance. These exercises are pleasurable. They add immensely to your glamour, particularly when you are properly dressed for the occasion. When doing them, try to give the impression that you are floating in the breeze. Your own body weight has nothing to do with that impression. In fact, if you are rather heavy, by perfecting these three exercises, you can give others the impression that you are surprisingly slender. Last exercise, exercise four. 
Repeat the three exercises above with still other poses and master a repertoire of them. Perfect at least four for each different garment. A short skirted dress or outdoor shorts require skill in posing the calves. An evening dress requires skill in posing the whole body from the waist up. After acquiring that much psychic power control over your muscle coordination center, you can wander into any desirable group or appear before any audience with a fascination of movement that will, th- that will enthrall all eyes. Sure, I know definitely for me, so I love seeing me a beautiful woman, you know what I mean? A beautiful woman is just, it's the greatest thing ever, you know what I'm saying? It's the greatest thing, seeing a beautiful woman. A beautiful woman, seeing a beautiful woman is like caffeine to a man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to explain, but like, seeing a beautiful woman, man, is like caffeine. It's like an energy drink, it's an energy shot, like, like. As a man, women is just some of the most beautiful. It's, a woman is so just, just everything. You know what I'm saying? But don't be simping, though. But anyways, man, I hope y'all enjoyed lesson three of Cyclamen C. Going over it with me, your boy, Johnny B, baby. You feel me? J. Benz the light, a.k.a. J. Benz do it right. You know what I'm saying? Now, this was just lesson three. Next episode, we will be going over lesson four. Lesson four will be how to put your resistant nerve gap under psychic power control. You feel So in the next video, we will be going over lesson four. And our intentions are to go over the entire book of cyclomancy and the secret of psychic power control. You know what I'm saying? In its totality. Oh, hold on. Let me show y'all my fault. So this right here. Lesson four, how to put your resistant nerve gap on the psychic power control. So all that being said, we will be going over the whole book, you know, but we're going we're gonna to go over it one at a time. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't, you know, try and do everything all at once. You know what I'm saying? Take your time with it. You should take your time with the knowledge when it comes to not only this, but when it comes to when it comes to the knowledge in general, you feel me? When it comes to the knowledge in general, you should always take your time with it because knowledge is something that needs to be processed just like food. You know, you eat your food, and you chew it good enough, and your body digests it, breaks it down, and it goes through the process of, you know, extracting the nutrients and extracting the waste or whatever, right? It's the same thing with knowledge. You have to process knowledge. You have to digest knowledge. Knowledge has to be processed and digested fully by your mind, your body, and your soul. You feel what I'm saying? In order for you to have a full understanding of it, you know what I mean? That's why when it comes to spiritual knowledge, spiritual truths, these are things that it may you may receive knowledge, some teachings from a spiritual master, but you may not be able to fully understand what the spiritual master is telling you for the simple fact, for the simple fact that your mind has to be able to digest it. You need to be able to cognize. You need to be able to, you need to contemplate it. You need to do something that the Hindus call left, right, vakya sada, or something, something like that. I'm, I'm definitely not pronouncing it right. But essentially what that means is, hold on. I'm going to Google that shit. Hold on. Something like that. Damn, I'm definitely not spelling that shit right. Hold up. Damn. I don't know how the fuck you spelled it, but it was like, all right, whatever. Fuck it. So essentially what it means is this. 
is a term in Hinduism that's called like left, right, vakya, sadhas. You need to be able, you need to cognize, contemplate, and process information, the knowledge in your left brain and your right brain. Now, this is something I'll show y'all this. I'll show y'all. Your left and your right brain, your left brain controls your sense of logic, you know? Your left brain is your sense of logic and stuff, whatever, you know, versus your right brain is like your creativity, your spirituality, you know. So-called black people, so-called black people are right brain people versus so-called white people, most Caucasians or whatever you want to call them, is, is left brain people. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to spiritual truths and just knowledge in general, but especially spiritual knowledge, you need to do a left, right, vakyasadas, meaning you need to filter these truths from your left brain and your right brain. You know what I'm saying? You need to filter it, you need to process it in your logical mind, like, like bring it down to earth. How does this make sense on an earthly level? You know what I'm saying? And then process it in your right brain okay how does this make sense spiritually like how whatever right you know what i'm saying so it's like this i'll give you an example let's say you're doing left the left right processing on understanding i am god i am the atman right spiritually we understand i am god as in that it's like this the simple fact that we all exist here the simple fact that you uh experiencing what you experience in your everyday life not only this video but you experiencing life itself who or what is experiencing life itself and when you go into meditation then and you get you you get to a certain point in meditation where you become the awareness and then you get to a point where you become aware of the fact that you're not your body. You get to a point in meditation where you understand that I'm not the body. You feel me? I'm not the body. And then you get to a point where you, you get past even that and you, and you get to a point where you realize that you're not even the mind. You're not even the mind because you're able to simply observe the body processes and whatnot and sensations, whatever. You're able to simply observe the mind and the different things which go through the mind, the different compulsions and impulses, whatever that goes through the mind, you know? So you're beyond the body and the mind. Spiritually, this is a spiritual thing to understand. Spiritually, you understand this when you go into meditation and then understanding that how I am God is like this. You understand that like, bruh, son, I'm just the awareness that's just aware of all of this type, this going on. And this is just an experience I'm having essentially within this body I find myself in, you know. But in the grand scheme of things, I am the nameless and the formless. You feel what I'm saying? There's, there's no beginning or end to me. You feel me? And then when you think about it logically, it's like this. It's, it's simply like these. Like, yo, I'm in this body. I'm in this body. I'm able to do all these different things. Like, like when I say, when somebody tells me to raise my hand, my hand doesn't just shoot up. I give my body the command to raise the hand. What is it that is commanding the body to raise my hand? What is that which, what is that which gives the body the command? Who am I that is commanding the body? Where am I located? You feel what I'm saying? Like, it gets so deep. It gets so deep. You feel me? It gets it gets very deep. But with all that being said, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode right here. Lesson three of Cycle of Man C, the secret of psychic power control. You feel me? And like I said before, uh, the next episode will be lesson four. Uh, lesson four, which is how to put your resistance nerve gap on a psychic power control. You feel me?
I'm Jay Benza Light. Follow me on all platforms. Sub like, site, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You feel me? In order to, you know, support me, support my work, help me out in the algorithm. You know what I mean? Help me build, help me get grow a following and all that. You know what I mean? Leave your feedback in the comment section. And the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to evolve, have an abundance mindset, eat healthy, work out every single day, get fresh air, stretch every day. You know what I mean? Have gratitude every single day, man. And just enjoy this experience that is called life. You know, despite all the ups and downs that are within life, despite all the different things we go through, remember to always have gratitude and always to really enjoy the experience itself, you know? Because this is your experience. This is your life. This is your incarnation. This is your it's your shit. <laughs> you feel me? So because of that fact, own your shit and really enjoy it, man. You know what I mean? Own your shit and really enjoy it. For real, for real. So all that being said, I'm Jay Benz the Light. To Hudi Ja, Chief Ja, Kabaja. You know what I'm saying? Peace be to the gods on earth. I'm out of here, man.